Okay, today's video we're going to look at combining what we learnt in the last two videos together and make a two sensor proportional steerer. That way when the robot goes around the line it will not only go around quite quickly but quite smoothly as well. In order to do that we need to know what both sensors are going to read when we're over to white. In the port view. So the left, the one that's in port one, which is the left sensor, is reading 100%. The one in the right sensor is reading about 69%. So we'll have to remember that 100% on the left when it's on the white, and 69% on the right when it's on the white. And this is quite common for different sensors to have different readings because they have different calibrations. Okay, it's time to have a look at the code. It works the same as the two sensor code we did before. We're just going to add the proportional steering. So it still works the same way where we put a switch inside a switch to make a three-way switch where we have three options. The first switch tests to see if the left sensor is over black. If not, it goes down to the second switch and tests whether the right hand sensor sees black. If it doesn't see anything, then it goes down the very bottom, which just makes the robot go straight ahead. So the first switch is going to test the left hand sensor to see black. So it's set, of course, to um, color sensor, light intent, compare light intensity. And we want it to go up to the top anytime it's less than 95 because when we did our port view we found when it was over the white the left hand sensor was reading 100 so anytime it's less than 95 it must be on the black up the top we read the value that's under the left sensor so we're going to set that to um, measure reflected light intensity and of course from port 1 because the left hand sensor is connected into port 1 then we have to find out how far that reading is from our set point. For the left hand sensor, our set point is 100 because that's where we want the sensor to be. So we're going to get out a mass block and we're going to set it to minus and we'll be 100 minus whatever value is coming out of the sensor. So that's how far offline we are. Then what we need to do is we need to multiply that by our scaling factor, generally referred to as your KP, so we have our next, next mass block set to multiply. I did some experimenting and I found about 0 0.8 was the best KP. What you'll find is if it's falling off the left, if it's falling off the line because the left hand isn't steering hard enough, you need to increase that KP. If it's turning really aggressively, you need to decrease that KP. That will be how hard it turns on the left. Now, because we want to turn left and not right, the amount we steer needs to be negative. So we add one more mass block in, and we put it multiplied by negative 1. So it'll stay the same size. It'll just be negative, i.e. turn left. And of course, we have our motor block. We're going to set it to be turned on. Our steering's going to come out of our last mass box to do the steering. And we're going to set it to our classic 30 motor power. And of course, making sure that the ports are set correctly. For me, it's going to be A and D. So now we'll go down and we'll look at this second switch. If the first switch hasn't seen black, it comes down to the second switch. The second switch is set the same way. It's set to compare um, reflected light intensity. And we want it to be smaller than 65 this time because when we did our port view we found that the right hand sensor in port 4 was reading about 69 when he was on the white so anytime it's less than 65 he must be on the white he'll come up at the top here we do the same thing we have we read the value out of the sensor so we're going to set it to measure reflected light intensity of course this time set to port 4 he's going to come out in our mass blocks our set point this time is going to be 69 because that's what that sensor reads when it's over white and that's what we want. So we'll find our distance from our set point, so our uh, mass block with minus 69 minus our sensor value, then we need to multiply it by our scaling factor, our KP. Now because each sensor is giving a different value to make it steer the same amount, the KP scaling factor will be different. 
So on the top split, on the top steering, I found 0.8 was the best KP. Down the bottom, I found I needed to go as high as 1.3 before it fell off. That's because the steering is putting out a smaller number, so it needs to be scaled up more before we get enough steering. And then, of course, he just comes out of the steering block. He's set to be turned on continuously, um, 30 power in the correct ports. If he doesn't see that, then he just goes down the bottom. We turn him on to go straight ahead for 30. So not too hard. Okay, time to put it around our test track and see how she goes. So hopefully the robot is much smoother when it goes around. Because that's the point of a, of a proportional controller, you should steer proportionally. Whereas an on-off controller just steers full steer all the time. See, it goes around nice and smoothly. Mm, a little bit of a wobble there. 